So the complex Fourier integral is written on front of you. Of course it's complex because we're using complex numbers. And this is only a few small steps away from the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform. The first thing we need to do is split our complex exponential here. We know that the, uh, the exponential function has the following property. So we rewrite our complex Fourier integral as follows. And we simply just rearrange it. So note that I've, I've bracketed off, we'll say, the integral with respect to r. What's important to note here is the, the exponential e to the i omega t is not a function of r and as a result can come outside of the integral. Finally, let's revert back to the variable t rather than the dummy variable r. What we get is the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform as a Fourier transform pair. The reason it's called a Fourier transform pair, as we'll see in a moment, is that this expression contains both the forward and inverse Fourier transforms. And the forward and inverse transforms are known as transform pairs. You might ask yourself, which of these integrals corresponds to the forward transform and which to the inverse? Well, let's look at the one which is bracketed in blue here. Let's say, let's say we didn't know what that was. So we have something integrated d omega giving us something, a function of t. So it's, we didn't start with a function of t. So this suggests that this integral in here is in actual fact the transformed function. And this suggests that the outer integral is the inverse Fourier transform and the inner integral is the forward Fourier transform. Because the equations are Fourier transform pairs, we are always able to move the 1 over 2 pi term anywhere, or a ratio that gives us that same. So we could, for example, split the 1 over 2 pi between the forward and inverse transforms, or we could just tag it onto one of the others, or we could put a ratio that adds to the same thing. This is the reason that you'll often see different versions of the Fourier transform. But of course they are all equivalent and it's just a case of moving the 1 over 2 pi or ratios thereof. So finally we come to the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform. And I've written it in four different ways. So we have, the f we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. On the left column we have a function of omega being transformed to a function of t. This is the inverse transform. On the right column, we have a function of t being transformed to a function of omega. This is the forward Fourier transform. Note that on equation 1, I have put the 1 over 2 pi on the inverse transform. On equation 3, I've put it on the forward transform. And in equation 2, I've split it between both transforms using 1 over root 2 pi. Now, we, we can also write this using the linear frequency rather than the angular frequency. And I've discussed how we can go between angular and linear frequencies in video number two. The point here is that if we, if we make our definition of the cosine of omega t, we go instead to the cosine of 2 pi nu t, we get the equations written as number four. You might say to yourself that there is no scaling term. Well, the scaling term is there because we have the one, the, the two pi is basically gone into the argument of the exponential function. So in another video, I have discussed the physical interpretation and uses of the Fourier transform, and I'm not gonna get bogged down in doing that here. Suffice it to say, that in the forward transform, we begin, we begin with a function, let's say, in the time domain, and the transform will transform it to a function in the frequency domain, and it will use cosines and sines as the basis functions in that domain. And the physical interpretation of this 
is that we are after decomposing our signal or function into its frequency components. And we speak of f of omega as living in the Fourier or frequency domain. So that's all I've got to say for that at the moment. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, excuse me, and you might also give university physics tutorials a view. Thank you.